Let's say we were asked to write some software to design a quiz. In this case, a quiz based on the U.S. presidents. What would a good design look like? Well, we have to remember that we're going to store individual pieces of information for each question. There's probably going to be a picture. And then, of course, we have to store the question itself, some multiple choices for each question, and then we have to keep track of the answers. Let's have a look at what two possible design scenarios might look like for such a president's quiz. One possible way we could approach the design of such a quiz is to keep a set of arrays. Here I've shown one array that keeps track of the questions, another one that keeps track of the right answers, and a third one that's two-dimensional that keeps the track of the choices for each of the questions. So here, for example, Lincoln, Hamilton, Washington, and Jefferson are the choices for the first question, whereas Taft, Jefferson, Washington, Lincoln are the choices for the second question. In this example I've shown here, there are only three questions, but I want you to imagine in the final version, the quiz will be quite large. There might be hundreds or perhaps even a thousand questions. What we have to ask ourselves is, is this a good design? What are the ad advantages and disadvantages of such a design? We're going to call this design a parallel array design. Now, we haven't shown it here, but when we implement the code to run through the questions, we're going to keep an index variable that's going to tell us which question we're currently on. Let's say the index variable was set to 2. We'd know that we were on the third question, since the indexes typically start numbering at 0. So with the index set at 2, we would be on this question here that asks which president presided over World War II. We'd also know that the right answer was the first uh, was choice number one, which actually is the second choice. That would be FDR. What would be the main advantages of such a structure? Well, it's quite simple. We can see that we've got everything loaded up in arrays, which we understand extremely well. But what would be the disadvantages of such an approach? I want you to imagine to this quiz, we're going to add a URL for each of the pictures that goes alongside uh, each of these questions. So to do that, you can see the first issue we have with such a design is that every time we add a field to the questions, we have to add a whole new array. Uh, let's do that here, and we'll add one for the pictures. Okay, now we've added the picks for each of the questions. And uh, let's assume for a moment that we forgot to add pick number two and accidentally skipped it. Can you see that not only would the second question get corrupted, but pick three and all the other picks after it would also get corrupted because all these entries here, starting at pick three, would move up one. This is one of the main problems with parallel array structures. We say that parallel arrays do not scale because in examples like this, when the number of entries becomes large, we have to manually coordinate all these arrays with one another. If any one of them, for example, let's say this one was to lose one of its entries, we don't just lose one question. We lose that question and all the other questions after it, which will now have all the wrong pictures associated with it, if it even compiles. So this is one of the main flaws of a parallel array structure. And now we're going to describe a better way to do this using classes. In this alternate object-oriented approach, we design a class called question that contains all the fields that are associated with each question. And then when we build our quiz, we simply keep a list of such questions to make up the quiz. Let's look at the advantages of such an approach over the parallel array structure that we had before. Notice that all the information for each question is contained in a self unit. If we get any kind of corruption in any of these questions, that corruption is likely to be limited to that single question. Likewise, when we manipulate the questions on the quiz, we're only having to manipulate a single list, whether it's an array or an array list. In general, this scheme is going to scale much better than the parallel array structure that we looked at before. This is one of the main themes that we want you to understand in this course, that using an object-oriented approach 
and using classes to encapsulate data is a much better design technique than using parallel arrays. Thank <laughs> you.